Today on the Relationship Renovation Podcast, we talk all about active listening, about the ability to sit with your partner and really take in what they're saying so that they feel heard, so that they feel understood. And we walk you through a series of questions that would allow you and your partner to explore this, hopefully in a really open-hearted, kind way. So stay tuned and learn more about how you can be a better listener for your partner. Do you wanna feel more emotionally and intimately connected with your partner? Then we have the tool that is exactly right for you. We have a program called Relationship Renovation at Home. And it is an amazing way for you and your partner to have a structured way weekly to work together. Because we deserve awesomeness in our relationships. Just go to our website, relationshiprenovation.com. At the top, there's a link to at home program and it will give you a free lesson. If you want to just check it out and see if it's something that works for you and your partner, we know it will make a significant positive impact on your relationship. Hello all and welcome to the Relationship Renovation Podcast. I'm Tara Kerwin. And I am EJ Kerwin. And today we're going to be talking about active listening. Yeah, active listening. Just, yeah, we really want you today to be able to walk away from this podcast with an understanding of what active listening is and some tools to start playing with it in your relationship. And so there's a lot of couples that have gone through our relationship renovation model and also have done the relationship renovation at home program. And so actually this is one of the exercises that we're going to do around our active listening. Couples love when we model some of the lessons that we give because that way it kind of helps them hear and see like the depths that we can go through it. So Absolutely. So we're going to define for you what active listening is, and then we're just going to go through the exercise as a couple learning ourselves about our active listening listening in our relationship. And I will just say that active listening is one of the hardest things for humans to learn, especially when conflict arises, because when conflict arises, our defense system gets activated automatically and we have the innate need to protect ourselves when we feel threatened. And then our brain starts to register our partner as the enemy. And that's when things go very badly yeah. because we don't want our brains to register our partner that we are madly in love with the enemy. And so this is why active listening is so important. Yeah, so, so active listening at its heart is just the ability when your partner is expressing something to you, your ability to be fully present for what they are saying and to be taking it in without creating a response before they're finished. That's really hard. And really we call hard. it, I think this was a Michael Singer quote, but heart with ears. Like, okay, my partner's talking to me and absolutely I'm trying to like come up with my response, but that's not being present. And I'm not even giving him my attention. So I'm just gonna be heart with ears. I'm gonna keep my body calm and I'm going to hear everything. And then there's ways where we can let our partner know that we heard them, right? And yes. one of the biggest things is like validation. Yes, I mean, so active listening, it not only allows you to take in the information in a, in a, in a less foggy way, but it also promotes your partner to continue to share. Yeah, and, and whether it's around something within your relationship or you know even outside of your relationship, instead of trying to fix it or anything, it's like one of the first things you want to know and hear from your partner is, I hear this is difficult for you and I appreciate you wanting to share it with me. That's like an, that's a, an example of validation. Absolutely. Doesn't that feel good when I say that to you? It does. It makes me want to tell you more. Another piece of active listening where your partner knows you're engaged, get ready for it. Okay. Curiosity. Ooh. Okay. Example of curiosity. Can you tell me more? I hear this. Is that accurate? You're just being curious instead of, again, defending yourself, having to fix some problem, letting them know your opinion. No, that is not active listening. Another piece, let's just say that there is a difficult conversation between you and your partner, right? And instead of kind of going into that defending, blaming, I didn't do that. That's not what I said. You really want to like do this reflection and summarizing. So an example is like, I know this conversation was nerve wracking in the beginning, but we were able to stay present and focused. 
These are the areas that I feel like are important to you. Here are mine. Can we meet in the middle? That's kind of what it looks like instead of the yeah. blaming, the projection, the withdrawing. It's like, hey, this is really difficult, but we're gonna stay present. Here's what's important to you. Here's what's important to me. Yeah, that that reflective speech, I have seen people just break down in session just when their partner repeats exactly what they said. Because so often we take what our partner says, we run it through our system, and then we give them sort of an analysis of what they say. And reflective speech is often, I heard you say, dot, 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 that you're just repeating to your partner what they said to you. And in that moment, then your partner feels heard. Like you actually heard exactly what I said. You didn't interpret it. You didn't change it. You didn't malign it. You just listened. And just to kind of put this in there too, like this honesty piece, we can't have healthy, active listening if we have a partner that's not being honest. For example, like, Hey, honey, you okay? Yeah, everything's okay. I'm I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. Versus like, hey, honey, is everything okay? Are you mad at me? And the partner is like, actually, I'm feeling irritated about the tone in our conversation. I would like for us to work on being kinder with one another. Bam. Well, Thank I, you. I think by becoming a better active listener, you are going about changing that honesty level. That if your partner feels you can just sit and listen and take it in, that then your partner be, feels more safe to open up in vulnerable ways about things. And there's a lot of individuals that struggle with being honest during challenging times because they, you know, they don't want to like hurt the other partner. They feel like they're going to be judged or feel judged. And so they don't want to say it, what's on their mind to avoid conflict. Again, that gets you nowhere. It gets stuck feelings in your body. Then it gets stuck conflict happening. And then this repetition of conflict happening. Yes. So now I think we're going to go through some questions that you could ask your partner around sort of assessing how much do the two of you actively listen to one another? And this is going to be interesting because we haven't done this exercise in a minute. Yeah. And I know I'm like the worst listener ever. I try really hard. Like when I'm having a hard time listening, I have this like little thing right between your eyebrows that I try to focus on. Like, that's a good idea. Like there's like a focal point, like on your partner's face that will remind you like, okay, listen, don't try to make a, a witty comeback. Like, don't try to like turn this conversation around. Don't do the chick flip, Tara. Mm -hmm. So I'll like look right between your eyebrows. And that to me is like, okay, I'm there. I've got to be an active listener. So here we go. All right. If you guys get triggered during these questions, walk away, take a break, come back. This is all about, hey, all humans are not good listeners. We have like a five second. Attention span. Yeah. That's like the newest research. That's rough. So we're just teaching each other how to be better listeners through some of these questions. Of course, we'll put them in our podcast notes. Okay. So maybe you'll answer one and I'll answer another. Does that feel good? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So first question is, what do we see as being the obstacle in our listening skills? Example, do we talk over each other? Are we already forming our response while the other is talking? Do either of us have a hard time staying present? I'm going to let you answer that one, honey. I mean, I see a couple of obstacles to our active listening. One is just that there's so much going around us, you know, that that either we're at work or we're with the kids, that there's always other things that are distracting, you know, and I think that oftentimes, like, it's hard for us to create the space where we're being intentional. Cause like we had a conversation the other night where I opened up a lot and it, it worked, but like you were like putting up Christmas decorations. Don't the judge. It's thing. before Thanksgiving. Don't and judge. So it was like, it was like, I knew you were trying, <laughs> but I had to fight through my like resistance to keep talking because you were distracted and you were doing other things. And so that's a greater challenge between us as well is that is sometimes I, I perceive you as easily distracted and it's hard to sustain. It's hard for you to sustain your focus on me. So this is where this beautiful intervention tool works. Hey, honey, it would mean a lot to me if you could just put the phone down, put the Christmas lights down, whatever, and just be present with me for five minutes. Yeah. That is so helpful. Yeah. And another thing too is like, I've noticed like I'll walk away like when you're talking because I'm like, oh, I've like, got to go. Where did she go? And I've learned, I'm like, oh, hang on, EJ. I'll be right back. I've just got to go throw the lunchbox in the kid's backpack, but I'm going to come back and talk to you. I've learned how to like do that now to, to let you know I'm going to come back 
but I really have to do this thing first. It's like, I'm just like ADD all over the place. Yeah. Okay. So the second question is how can we individually improve our listening skills? For example, I could get better at eye contact, repeating what I heard to make sure I heard it correctly. I could do all of those. I think it's staying in the room with you and looking at you instead of going a mile a minute everywhere else. Like I can still get better at that. I That's what I do. I'm like a, I, they call me like the Tasmanian devil. Like, she's just like a whirlwind, Tara the tornado, they say. Yeah, and for me, the, the what could I do better to actively listen? I have to be very aware of my internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. The, if there's anything that triggers me that doesn't seem like you're paying attention, or in the opposite, if you're sharing, if I get defensive and feel like I'm, you know, I'm being attacked in any way, that's when I stop listening. So I have to be very aware of how my internal dialogue gets my attention instead of what you're saying. Thank you. I'm working on it. (laughs) I know. Okay. So the third question is, do we feel that we can communicate open and honestly? Why or why not? So for example, we can express when something is bothering us and share it. We have a hard time letting each other know when something is on our minds because we don't want conflict. You know, it kind of gives these little prompts. Yeah. So we ask the the core question one more time. So everybody gets that. Do we feel that we can communicate openly and honestly? Why or why not? I think we're we're continuing to work on that. Like I'm continuing to work on that. There are dynamics in my relationship, in our relationship, and then dynamics from my past that led me to believe that people don't really care or want to hear what's going on for me internally. And so for me, and therefore for us in our relationship, that is a dynamic that I have to be aware of. Yeah, and I feel like I do communicate openly and honestly, but I have like more of an edge there. I could soften it up for sure. I kind of come at you instead of with you. So I'm kind of working on that. Okay. uh, Next question is what, in what ways can we improve our communication during stressful times? So for example, we can take a time out or use our code word when we feel the tension building. So EJ, in what ways can we improve our communication during stressful times? Well, I think that we have to be very aware of that concept of window of tolerance that mm-hmm. we that we talk a lot about is that both of us need to be in a place where our central nervous systems are not activated. I think in conflict, you and I, you know, we can get lost in sort of our reactive responses. Mm-hmm. And so personally, I have to know Am I really there? Because I might be able to like sort of convince myself that I'm in a place where I can listen, but oftentimes I'm not. How about how about for you? I feel like, and there's a lot of people out there, like I am compelled to get the last word in and I am compelled to like make you hear me and to let you know that I am right. And I just feel like I can't just call my code word because I just have this like, but I have to let you know what feels fair. And so I just have to be really aware that like I'm a, what did they call it, spitfire? Like a little pistol like. My intuition is not to be like, you know, honey, I'm gonna use code word right now. And my intuition is to like make sure I have the last word so that you know that I'm right. So I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on, again, that's the softening and knowing that like nothing good comes out of it. And we've worked with so many couples where even if we're like saying, hey guys, okay, it's the end of the session. We always try to do an appreciation where the appreciation comes out of like, I'm gonna have the last word that you totally suck. Yeah. Like, oh, it's just really hard. There's some people that have like more ego, pride, stubbornness, whatever it might be. So, okay. How about in what ways can we be more focused and present for each other? So again, I have examples here on our lesson, like we can put our phone down for 15 minutes before bed to connect. We will call each other once a day and ask how the day is going. So again, what ways could we be more focused and present for each other? I think for us, it's like we have to make even small amounts of time where we have each other's undivided attention. I agree with that. You know, just like 10 minutes of like, okay, we're gonna, like you said, we're gonna put the phone down. But for me, it's like, I'm gonna put my mental crunching down. Yeah. And for you, I, I think it's like, you feel like there's so much you have to do and get done that stopping to connect 
with me feels like it's like I'm, I'm, I don't have enough time. You're getting yeah. behind, and so like it has to be, I think, a priority for us to create intentional time to sit and listen to one another. Yeah, and again, also for me, that focus of like right in between your eyebrows. So I know that I'm staying present with you. That helps me to stay present for you at a time where I really want to react. But I'm like, no, his middle between his eyebrows, that's, I'm curious. I'm going to be curious. I'm going to reflect. I'm going to validate. I'm going to do all those things that I wrote down in my lesson to do. <laughs> it's so well, hard. And, and what you're talking about there is you're talking about increasing mindfulness is that like, you know, sure. mindfulness is the ability to focus the mind where you choose, not where it instinctually goes. And so what you're saying is like, I need to practice some mindfulness skills when we do sit down and talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> you're like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no. there, my active listening was not good there. I'm like, okay, we got to move on to the next question. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just recognize that. Okay. So really. I appreciate the, the fact that you just recognized that you were uh, zooming ahead of me. So the final question, and this one is again, real honest. And it lets your partner know, like, Tell me my blind spot. What can I do better? The question is, is there something that I do in our communication that makes it difficult for you? So for example, I get frustrated when you ask me a question and then you don't wait for my response and answer it yourself. I have a hard time when I'm interrupted. Wonder where that came from. <laughs> so is there something that I do in our communication that makes it difficult for you? Yes. Do tell. And I, we've talked about this before. I mean, I need to know that I have your attention. Yeah, I is know. Is that you, you're you so frequently zooming around that it's extremely hard for me to know that I have your attention. Yeah, and that means everything. When you actually stop and you look at me, mm -hmm. like I feel so connected and, and so like I matter and I'm so important that you can stop all that, but it's hard for you to do and it's, you know, I'm also learning to be patient with it, but then also make a direct request of it would mean so much if we could have a moment where it, where you, you stop and you just look at me and we and we connect right here. And then that you feel like willing and not frustrated that you have to do it. So I hear, so this is gonna, I'm gonna put a little tool in there, right? You know, that validation and or clarification piece that shows you that I was listening. So I hear EJ that it's really important for you that I stay present and have your attention and you have my attention during conversations together. Yeah, that, that means everything to me. That, okay. means, that means a lot. Okay. How about for you, is, are, there, are there things about our communication that you'd like to see change? Yes, the, I would say the hardest thing for me is when I see your eyes shift to this judgmental place. Like that's how I intuit it. It's like a, your eyes go from this like soft glaze, which they are now, to this like harder focus. And I immediately am just like, oh, okay, I don't feel emotionally safe right now because he's actually judging me because now he's thinking that I'm saying something that I'm criticizing him and now I can't be free to be me. So it's like, a, it's an I thing. Yeah. And so that's hard for me. So I guess it would be helpful if you would work on softening your gaze during yeah. conversations, especially that are difficult between the two of us. So what I'm hearing you say is that when we're having conversations, that when I keep my gaze soft and when I'm not judging, when I keep my heart open and my ears open to you, mm -hmm. uh, you feel safer and you're more apt to open up to me. Yes. Nice, I'll do my best. And there you have it, folks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so- A little active listening lesson, great questions to ask. So what we're talking about there is like, how do you create an environment where you and your partner actively listen to one another? That you create an environment where your partner feels open to share their mm. feelings and they feel heard. And then we gave you some prompts, you know, we gave you some questions that you can ask mm. that can maybe generate a really like positive conversation conversation between you and your partner. Couples love this exercise because they don't realize how bad of a listener they are 
which is not a bad thing. We're just, again, like I said, you know, we've got a five second attention span. It's not our fault. It's all this media stuff yeah, and social. Well, and we, we each have our individual challenges, you know, because we identified in our relationships that the challenge for me is I'm up in my head and I'm thinking and responding inside my head before Tara is done speaking. For Tara, it's more about she's busy and, and it feels like she doesn't have time to listen to me. And so each of you are gonna have your challenges here, right? So that's important to say, like none of us are perfect active listeners. And so our hope is that you can take this topic, you can take those questions and you can, you know, in a really curious, kind, loving manner, discuss with your partner, how could you be better communicators with one another? Thank you for listening, audience. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Were you, you actively listening? <laughs> no, this was fun. It was, uh, you know, it's always fun to offer you like a direct, like, hey, here's six questions you can interact with your partner about. Well, and it's a good reminder too, because like we've talked th about this with us and then I'm always like, oh yeah, I've got to stay present and in the room. I forget these things. Like, this is why you can't just go through and be like, okay, well, we talked about it. And, and like six months later, like, remember we talked about that six months ago? You have to constantly remind each other what's important to you and what listening looks like for you that would be good for you. So it's not just like a one-time done conversation. It's a constant continuing conversation always. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you today for listening to our active listening podcast. We hope you got something out of it. We hope that you have this conversation with your partner around how you can improve your listening skills. It always feels so good when we are sitting there knowing that we are heard, we are being paid attention to, and our partner is present for us. So thank you so much for listening. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Singing on the train, me and you listening to the rain, me and you, we are the same.